Fire. What's up, Shinners? It's Shindig Podcast. Tom Hutley here. And Mr. Matt Pengelly. Just a little intro. Welcome yeah. back. We had a little bit of a, a break from doing podcasts. Nice little reset there. Everyone needs a break. It's healthy, of yeah. course. Uh, just understand what kind of uh, guest we have on and kind of direction that we want to go in. So it's all good news, basically. Yes. yes all good. good news. Uh, this is a good chance as well. Um, if you love the Shinger Pop Podcast, Please do reach out to us on all of our platforms. We're, of course, pretty much everywhere on the interwebs, uh, be that Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, or even, best of all, our own website, shindigmedia.com. Yes. Uh, if you really enjoy what we do, uh, please do support us by, you know, helping yourself to, to some merch that we have over there. Um, even if you can't buy the merch for whatever reason, uh, we are always constantly updating our clothing lines. Yep. Uh, specifically for riding as well. So we've been looking at like different materials and yeah. things that are good for riding, high quality stuff. But if you can't support us in that way, one of the best and free ways to do it is just to connect with us on all of our social medias. Yeah. So whether that's leaving this podcast uh, a nice five-star review on Apple Podcasts, whether that's to share something that you've seen on the or Instagram. Subscribing to the Shindig Podcast YouTube channel, which we're still you know, growing on there, so make sure you do that as well. Yeah, that all really, really yeah. helps. Uh, just and for everyone who's always been listening, you know, thank you for yeah. your support so far. Thank you so much. Uh, all your comments and contributions really do help us grow uh, the podcast because you know we are a small community and we want to make this as approachable yeah. as mm. possible. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, everyone needs to treat themselves uh, every so once in a while. So if you want to get that nice sport line t-shirt hoodie, you're going to treat yourself to some high quality clothing and then also support your favorite podcast. Of yeah. course. It all goes back into the podcast, helps yeah. with our hosting of the websites, the, you know, our Shopify, the actual podcast platform. Uh, and, you know, fingers crossed, you know, help us to invest into, yeah. you know, more future cool stuff. And some trials events is one of the things we want to, you know, try and bring to you guys we'll as see. well. So we'll, we'll all tie in to that. So who have we got on today, Matt? Oh, wow. Um, we've got a very well-known competition rider, um, the guy... Mr. Vincent Hermans. Hermans yeah. I think there's going to be a lot to enjoy from this, really. Uh, some really good nuggets. We learned some things on it, didn't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, one of that, th this really, um, he really had some good insights um, and a, a completely different uh, view yeah. on looking at trials. Um, I would say he even goes into how to beat Jack Carthy. Yeah, he's really refreshing for someone who's been in the game for so long and he's still got kind of different ways of thinking about riding, which is awesome. Uh, we also get into the discussion that, you know, Vincent used to be a real weight weenie. He used to drill holes in a lot of things. <laughs> and now why he thinks that's actually the opposite is true. You know, that the weight doesn't matter in trials. And uh, yeah, finally as well, he was, of course, the, the main man for Cox. You know, he talks yeah. a lot about some of the prototypes that he rode. Um, but yeah, have a listen to it yourselves. Yeah. I think you're all really going to enjoy this one. Let's get into it. Ah, you Welcome back, Shinners. You're back with us on the Shindig podcast, where we get yeah. under the skin yeah. of the trials community. I'm Tom Hutley. Uh, and I'm Matt Pengelly. Today, very a very big deal in the trial scene Yeah, again. I'm excited. This we is a lot of this. avenues of conversation with this man. Let's just get straight into it. Vincent Hermans, thank you so much. Yes, mate. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Guy, for guesting me. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be to be in here, and I checked all the list of the previous rider, so it's an honor for me to be in there. So thanks a lot. Oh, wow. absolutely. Yeah, we couldn't not, mate. You're um, a big name in the scene, covering and uh, covering all aspects of the sport. Uh, I must say. But for those of you who don't know, uh, let's find out where where in the world are you, Vince? Uh, right now, I'm uh, I'm home. Uh, I'm just back from uh, a week in Spain. Uh, this time it was a bit different. I, I've trained so hard uh, for too long because we didn't have any season last year. So yeah. it's strange for me because the season is not started already, ready, and I was so tired. So it was a bad plan. <laughs> it was like, okay, normally in the last weeks before the World Championship, you have a lot of job to do. But this time for me, it's the exact opposite. I have to relax a lot because some days my level is very good, the best of my life, and some day yeah. I'm just so tired. So I was like, okay, let's change the plan. So I'm back from eight, nine days in Spain and only one training session a day and more holidays than proper training. And my opinion, my, my goal is just to get the, the level I can have on the best day, the day of the World Championship. So, of course. Yeah. 
I'm just back from Spain. I had a show in the in the Alps uh, on Monday, and now I'm just here and back to training this afternoon. So regular life for me. Yeah. Wow. And, and you obviously a lot has changed. Like you've just mentioned there, you're only training like once a week. Obviously the pandemic hitting. Um, you've pretty much been riding your whole life training constantly. Um, you know, we are going to try and go back a little bit to the the start of your career, Vince, for, for those that don't know over there. How how did that really kick off in terms of a career for you? Because we know a lot about stories about people becoming trials riders. But um, I'd be really interested to, to see how you started to make it, uh, well, your life, so to speak. Uh, honestly, uh, I just started riding. And uh, when I was like 11, 12, so not so early, mm -hmm. not so young. And it took me a long time to be in the best, best, best guys uh, in France. So... Riders like the Custelier, for example, were so much better than me, and Kenny the same. So I was like, okay, for me it was just just a pleasure. I was riding this way, and no, no big agenda in here. And uh, in 2001, I think uh, it was my my first year as a junior, and at the World Championship in the US, I won the semifinals. And I, I can remember that that call. Uh, you know, no no mobile phone at the time. You had to go to the I don't know the name in English, the big machine, you know, and put some coin on it and try to, yeah. to call friends. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I told my dad and I say, okay, I won the, the qualification. It's something else. And he said, no, it's, it's absolutely pointless. And I was like, no, no, it's everything. In my opinion, my career, my career was done already. Uh -huh. I was like, no, tomorrow you have a competition. You have to do something, do your best. And I also won the, uh, the final. So I, I became a junior world champion. It was the first time I was able to beat uh, Giacomo, to beat Kenny, to beat Thomas Holler, so many good riders. And from that point, I was like, okay, now it's I have to keep this mentality to play with the bike, but maybe it could be something bigger than I, so bigger. I've I've been an outsider for, for a long time, mm. and maybe it's what keeps me motivated, passionate, yeah. because I, I, I never thought like, okay, if I'm second or third, uh, it's the end of the world, not for me. It has never been a job, never been a, a real plan. It's year by year. And so, yeah, after the World Championship, it gets a little bit more serious, but mm. uh, it was cool because uh, as my career gets more interesting, uh, Cox, the, the, the brand get bigger yeah. too. So I was walking. No, I was just having fun with my bike, having fun with Cox. And uh, I was in the Cox building and we were just speaking like that. So... It was it wasn't a job either. So I was like, okay, my car is getting bigger. Cox yeah. was bigger, but there was no no plan. It sounded like it happened quite naturally. Yeah, so naturally. And yeah. uh, and my career has been this way for so long. I can remember when I was like, I don't know, like twenty two. I was like, okay, what am I gonna do in three or four years? Because it, it's gonna be time to stop trials. And my dad was like, no, you're crazy. You could you could still ride until you're. 28, 29, maybe. And uh, yeah. it's almost 10, 10 more years. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> He's so, still, still going now, Vince. It's still going yeah. now. So, uh, I'm just giving up with the, with the plans and just following, uh, following the, yeah. The, that's the quite project. liberating, actually. So you're, you're sort of going, as you're saying, you're going with the flow and that's how you've approached your trials career, per se, rather than I need to be doing this in two years, this in five years, or... Honestly, I have had a very bad moment in my career. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can't tell the years exactly. Uh, something like 2010, mm. because uh, Gilles was absolutely unbeatable. So if I was between perfect and quite bad, I was second or third. And uh, if I was first, it was something crazy. I had to be over my best and Gilles so bad. And to be out of the podium, it had to be, well, I, I never missed the podium almost. So it was kind, honestly, kind of boring because it was only second, third, second, third, second, third. And I was like, okay, there is nothing fun in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I could keep this level for a long time, but being better than Jill complicated. And I was turning around, it was so boring. So I can remember in 2014, it was the first time uh, and the only time I said, okay, I had, I have to make a real plan. Mm. And I was like, okay, first World Cup is in one month. Let's switch to 20 inch. 
and 30 days before the, the, the World Cup in Alter, I took the 20 inch. Yeah. And I, I wrote this season with the with 20 inch. It was the only time I make a kind of plan, something strange, because I had to to put a change in motion. And uh, it was a so cool year because I, I I wasn't fighting with Gilles mainly, and it was so boring between the two of us because he, he was winning all the time, and uh, he was well, so yeah. Boring. That's what everyone was just aiming to beat Gilles back then. Yeah, it was impossible. Now it's different because uh, Jack is is over all of us, but then we are a bunch of uh, of riders. So first you have to compete those guys, and then maybe you can beat Jack. It's different, but at that time for me it was me second alone. Sometimes fighting with Kenny, but th- that was it. And so I met this year in 20 inch and it was so cool. I was uh, fighting against Benito and Abel, who are riders that, uh, and person that I really appreciate. It was so cool. But the 20 Is that inch, what made you go to yeah, the I was going to say, because that's, yeah, you can go back through the world championships then as you see there's a year that you did 20. You, you just done that as kind of like a, to reframe almost. Exactly. Because uh, oh. I, I loved everything about it. Except riding a twenty-inch bike, <laughs> <laughs> you were like you get you going. You were going against people that weren't Shields and weren't Kenny because that's all you had to compete against. Exactly. Really, you three were like always on the podiums in different positions. And... No, no, no. <laughs> Jim first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Position. It was so boring. So uh, I switched to twenty-inch, and it was it was awesome because I had some uh, cool victories in the World Cup. Uh, I was kicked off the podium because uh, Rick Kukuk at that time was also very good. So it was really cool, but I hated it. Right, uh, I hated riding the 20-inch bike. So I switched back to 26 in 2013. But my mentality was different. I don't know. It's it changed my mind. I was like, okay, let's see what's what can be done, and mm-hmm. let's stop thinking about Jill because for me it was almost an obsession. This guy was so good, and I was I was putting myself to try to be half of what he was. It was it was crazy, and then from 2013 I won the World Championship in uh, in South Africa, and I was like, okay, it's cool, and it was maybe the the best title of my career because I was coming back from 20 inch. Mm. Uh, at this time, I was also studying to become a nurse, so I had less time to ride. So I I went back to the to my young age mentality, and it was it was awesome. And from from this point, so. 10 years, 10 years ago, maybe, I stopped the plan again, and it's it just cool. It just cool. You found, like, the love for it again, you say, like the buzz, rather than being put down by always trying to beat one person sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, uh, for two or three years, uh, Cox were on top. I was almost on top, but not first. So, yeah, those two, three, four seasons were kind of boring, but... All the rest of my career is just honestly, it's 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 what I love. It must, must be so hard though, because it's not. To, it's like when you see like sports, like Formula One, and there's like twenty places or yeah. whatever. It doesn't mean that the people at the back are any worse riders. No, you're no. still riding at such an incredibly high level. Yeah. Um, but then you that you've always got to be looking at this person at the top. It's it's so frustrating. I can imagine. We also uh, Tom made a really good point earlier and mentioned that. Um, a lot of the time, uh, it seems that the French, the, the best riders, were always on 26. Oh, well, yeah, I want to get your opinion right. on this. Because if, if anyone goes on Wikipedia, right, and you can see, like, the, the whole standings of the World Cups going back forever, the 26 World Championships is always... It's so many French flags. French, French it's, flag. Every 26-inch And rider. the 20-inches are, like, Spanish flags. I mean, have you got any sort of insight into that? Does French guys just, like, ride in 26? How does that work? Do you know? Uh, honestly, there was a reason because when I when I was like, it's it's because I'm still here. I, the, what I'm going to tell you is the reason why I'm still here. Yeah. When I was like uh, 14 or 15, there were so many great French riders in 26. So if you could be not so bad here, it means that you are already in the in the best of the world of your age. And you even didn't realize that you are like a little rider, maybe the number two of your club, the number five of your region, mm. and you are already in the top 15 of the world. So many riders are not here anymore from this period, but they were so, so, so good. And I just, just 
it's it's what I what has worked. And now, honestly, it's totally over. And uh, in, and now uh, I can I, I train some riders in the club, and my best rider from here are the best from France. And it's cool. I'm very proud of it. But it's bad because because it's so poor. There is not not enough riders, not enough level. And uh, what I'm always saying to them is like, okay, let's go to ride in Spain with the, another 20 inch riders, just the Spanish riders. And you will see, and they go to Spain like, okay, I'm the, I'm the crack of friends, I'm going there. And they go to the first bike park and there is riders there. I don't know them, no one knows them and they are better than my riders. Wow. So, okay. And the, in Spain, it's happening what happened in France. and. So the level was so good in France that everyone was was uh, competing against each other. So the level was high, but the other rider from other country they had to come to train with us. So we had we had uh, sparring partners to mm. to ride with them, but we didn't have nothing to do. They just came to us, and were, so any any Sunday you were riding in a, in a famous spot like Butiers or whatever. Yeah. And Riders from all over the world were there. We didn't have nothing to do. And now it's happening in Spain. Uh, first for maybe 10 years in Catalonia, it was crazy. You go to bike park like Arius, like La Poma, like Trial Evolution. Yeah. It's crazy. You go there and it's a micro world championship. It's it's nuts. And now yeah, the level is just completely different. Yeah. In Madrid with... Uh, with the Baron, with uh, Borja, and Yulen is there a lot, Yulen Saints, yeah. and it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, honestly. And uh, we, we had this, and now Spain Spain has it. So it's the reason. That does uh, make sense, I suppose. Yeah, like you you always want to be around people that are you know better than you, that you aspire to in any walk of life, I suppose. So if you're serious about training, then you're going to try and train with you know the the people at the top of the game i suppose and i know most of the com the competitors within the sport they say they want to go and train with their um people they're against you know do you know what i mean it, it's great kenny and you maybe training together or andre and you people those all of those levels training together even though you're competing with each other and i don't think there's not many sports that do that that's yeah. one thing i'd notice with a, within our trials life yes you have people you you're against you know but generally, we, we all sort of train together, even though we're, we're competing at the same thing, which is something I've always found really encouraging with the sport and that, that kind of stuff. But when I got into this, first got into it, Spain, 20-inch rider was just, that. Well, that's where the scene, it felt like the scene was in Spain and France, yeah. like 10, 15 yeah. years ago. Um, what do you what what are your thoughts on kind of the scene now in in, in France and Spain? We've got there's a couple of French riders that have, I know support the Shinny, which is really good as well. So I'm just trying to see what the scenes are like now. For example, that that's um... mm, in my opinion, we have a kind of maybe poor period, but some top riders remain here, uh, like uh, Nico. Mm -hmm. mm. They are top riders, so they but. From this generation, those two are very strong. And then Nathan Chara is a very good rider too. Mm. But then, who else? It's hard to tell. So, in my opinion, French riders in 26 remains good, but we don't have the the mass we had. And uh, in, in in the future, I hope uh, Nico is going to be the best rider. So we have we'll have a French flag. Okay, very high. It's good, but. It won't be the same because there is not the same density. So it's we'll have a problem at the moment. Maybe maybe it will be uh, hidden by some one two top riders, but it's gonna be complicated. But I'm not that yes, I'm not I'm not worrying so much because uh, many riders of my generation and younger are starting to coach, and I think if we can do a good job all together, and if the federation helps a lot helps us, us sorry a bit we're going to have something interesting again in the future when when you're looking at what's happening in in spain it's very easy there is a lot of bike park some coach and then many riders it it has to work it has to work yeah. are you running uh, a club yourself in france right now vince is there anything that you're working on uh at the moment i'm uh, i'm a coach in a club mm -hmm. so i train there twice a week uh, with uh, with a lot of riders and uh, no, not a lot. With a lot of 
competition rider. Competition so it's riders, group, yeah. yeah. It's a group of 10 riders. It's very interesting, but it's not it's not enough. It's not big enough. But this this is something I really like. Mm. And also I'm uh, managing my academy. Uh, so I, I help the rider who, well, I would like, I would like what I propose to be useless, but it's a bad thing because there is not enough coach, there is not enough clubs, yeah. so it's kind of useful. And I help uh, riders, mainly mainly French riders, but also some riders in Belgium. And uh, I have a, I have a, also a student from uh, Greece, so it's very cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, I. It depends on the rider um, expectation. For some riders, it can be a real plan, like uh, with the physical preparation and everything. So it's a planification of training. But with other rider, it's just some correction. They send me the their videos, and we we check what we can work on, what the correction that can be made. So this is something very very important for me right now, because uh, it first it, it keeps me fresh. Because uh, I have to think for the other, I have to think about yeah. my, my yeah. So it's well, it's a big word, but it's also I think it's my my mission now. Uh, I I have had a good a good role, I guess, in the past with Cox, with some yeah. media, cool, and I could be I could be so selfish and in the same time helping was good, but now it's not working anymore. It's it's pointless. So I try to be, I try to help directly the riders. Uh, being a coach do you find yourself probably riding less now and doing more coaching has it gotten to that point no 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 90 percent of my time is is my my own preparation and okay I, yeah, still, I, yeah yeah no, I, wanted, I get it no i have to be honest uh the the, the main thing for me is uh, is preparation for competition uh, I, I i like so many other things but this is this, this is what i live for and aside Yes, I love, I love, I love being a coach, but honestly, in, in my mind, it's totally mixed with my preparation. I go, I train on the on the venue, and then my students come, and we, I give them lesson, and then we ride again together, yeah. and it, it's all mixed. So it's yeah, it's one thing for me which has different, uh, different little aspects, but mainly the, the thing is my my own career. Honestly, I yeah, I yeah. remain yeah. I remain. A, a selfish uh, competition rider. <laughs> <laughs> We're quite, um, I think myself and a lot of riders are very interested to see you know, your movements uh, because you've been within the competition scene for so long and what you've just said, you're still going for it. How long can you go for? I mean, I know it's very hard to say because mm. you go, you look at every year and readjust, but, you know, it'd be very inspiring to see if, you know, we can ride trials for, for many more years. I mean, do you, do you think that way or when I when I started uh, the the main the general idea was like okay it's uh, it's an expositivity expositivity exp, explosive sport I don't know yes. the, the Ex move, explosive right? yeah, exp yeah. Oh, explosive yeah yeah, yeah. explosive uh, sport yeah. so uh, it's the quality you will lose first with the age so at twenty five it's maybe the limit it was the mentality. So since I'm 25, I'm like, okay, one more year, we'll see. One more year, we'll see. And now I have stopped counting. It's it's totally pointless. I have two two goals to, uh, that that keeps me in the loop. First, I want to get better. Uh, I want my level to progress because it's so many hours. It's so frustrating. Honestly, sometimes when when the the training is not going good enough, uh, it's I feel bad. I feel terrible, yeah. and it's complicated. Honestly, it. it I, I don't speak English good enough to express it, so it's it's going to be too strong. What I'm going to say, but uh, I'm depressed when I'm riding bad for two weeks, three weeks. So, it's so much commitment that yeah. I have to progress. I have to progress. Yeah. If, yeah. if I could have, if I could have the best result without progressing, I would quit. And the other thing is. Uh, I want uh, good results, so I want to fight at least for the podium. And until I can fight for the podium and get better every day, I have no reason to quit. So until your body says ride. no, basically, <laughs> uh, it's not saying no at the moment, but it's yeah. not saying yes either. <laughs> I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know those. 
Well, I mean, it, with the pandemic have been happening, you know, because you're very competition driven. And I think that's he- I think that's healthy because, you know, you have a, a means to an end in doing that. And how did you find taking that break with the pandemic? Because was this the first time in your trials career that there was no competition? Yes. So what yes. did you how did you keep motivated, keep, you know, keep fit and keep in that sort of well mode, so to speak? Uh, many people will say that, but it, it, it has been a very strange period for me, but very interesting on three level. Uh, first, regarding my personal life, it was it was a disaster, a total disaster. I, I get divorced, and it was a bad period for me. So it was bad, and then it was good. So it was a big change. So first, this uh, maybe maybe that put me away from just thinking about the competition and. It forced me to have a, a bigger vision of the thing. And then I, during the pandemic, I don't know why, because uh, honestly, with my personal situation, I was feeling very bad. But, that sounds tough, man. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that sounds difficult. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Honestly, it, 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 was, uh, it was so bad. And the thing, the thing, that, the thing that helps me in life mm-hmm. is the bike. Not only the bike. Well, yeah. It's, it's okay, my, my family and my personal life is one big thing and the bike is another big thing. Mm. So as one time was totally uh, exploding because you can't see any friend during the pandemic, you had to be alone or in family and my family was, was exploding too. So it was so bad that I just had the bike and I don't know how because I, feel, I felt terrible. I couldn't sleep at night. I was losing weight because I felt so bad, yeah. but my level exploded. It's very strange. I don't know what happened in my mind. So I was like, okay, I have an opportunity here. And I say, okay, there is no competition. So stop thinking about being uh, a little bit better regarding the competition of one in one week, in two weeks or yeah. whatever. Just think about the level of the level of control I would like to have on my bike. Because honestly, I have uh, I have been fighting against rider, in my opinion, who had a better uh, control of their bike Gilles of course Jack of course but also a rider like Kenny he didn't have the, 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 the best the, the higher move for many years in his career he, was the, he wasn't jumping higher or whatever but he was so in control and I always felt like uh, I was lacking of this control and I was like okay this period is going to be the right time for me to think about my how I I ride my organization on the bike, how I feel, and to improve my my control. And yeah. I changed a little bit my my perspective. And I wasn't trying to prepare for a competition. I was trying to get to a point where I could say, okay, I'm mastering my bike. I'm feeling yeah. I I'm feeling a level of control that that is the thing I've always uh, chased, maybe. And uh, it happened. And I was always riding in my indoor place which is so small so boring but i don't know what happened i had so many motivation i ride a lot a lot a lot and my control evolved so much so i think it's almost impossible to check from the outside but now when i'm riding good i'm i'm feeling things that i never had in the past so far yeah for two years maybe one year uh, one year and something i'm I'm having the best feeling on my bike. Um, wow. That sounds that's, incredible. That's inc- especially like you said, as you get, you were mentioning earlier going, oh yeah, I'm 25, 26, oh, I'm hitting my peak already. So do you think now that you're really, you're at your peak maybe right now? Ah, it's, it's a tough question because uh, ah, if I'm, if I am at my peak, I'm going to start to go down. So I hope it's that. That's an interesting. That's climbing. A re- yeah, climbing. no, you're not at your peak. I actually, I love that. Actually, it's a really <laughs> good point because you'll just plateau. Now, honestly, uh, last year, Frank, we 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 have had a French Cup, and uh, so a French Cup is not the the biggest deal that you could have. But I I make all sixty points in qualification and the same in finals, wow. taking so much risk and everything was paying off. And I was like, okay, this is the, the best riding in competition of my career. And honestly, this season is not, it's not, it's not this good. 
So I hope it wasn't a peak, but for the first time I can say, okay, one year ago, I was maybe a little bit better than I am now. So I hope it just, it's just happening now. And so my, my goal, of course, is to be better than I was last year, to get it back. And also I have a lot of perspective to make my riding better. Uh, maybe not regarding this level of control, this level of power or whatever, but uh, it's obvious that uh, it's trial is getting more dynamic. And when I'm checking yeah. all videos, I was like, okay, three obstacles, two minutes 30, it was so boring. And I was like, okay, this was the, this was the thing. And now you, you take a look at it, it's, so, it's completely another spot. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to reach it, but I know exactly where I would like to be uh, in one month for the World Championship, in six months, in one year, and maybe in two years. So I have a lot of perspective. Uh, I, I want to get back the, the feeling I had last year. It's not as good uh, as I was. And also I have a bigger picture for the future because, uh, well, maybe it's, I think it started with Jack, but we had no way to understand what's happening because he was like, okay, the guy is faster. He's faster, but he can jump higher. Is he faster because he jumped higher? Or does he jump higher because he's fresh and yeah. when, when yeah. he went to the big obstacle? So how can we get better than him? Because if we want to jump as high as him, we have to work on isolate obstacle. But he's also so much faster. So what can we do? So oh, honestly, I couldn't understand a thing. I was like, Pwah. it's just <laughs> something. It's it's a mystery. But a rider like Charlie, in his way, was like, okay, maybe the, the plan is a bit different. You have to, to get another, another way to feel comfortable on the bike, to get more flow. And Charlie helps me to understand a bit Jack. And now you have those Spanish riders, mainly Borja and, yeah. and Alvo. When you look at them, you're like, okay, so my ID, to be better, do I have to jump higher or do I have to be faster? The question, I couldn't understand, uh, find the answer because the question was terrible. No, everything is, has to be put together. So yeah. flow, yeah. more. So I have to work on my uh, physical preparation to have more cardio maybe or to jump higher maybe but no first the job has to be done on the bike to mix everything and to to ride like those guys because it's the it's the future of trials like one fluid motion you mean like everything in yeah. one exactly exactly yeah and uh Some light bulbs are going off a little bit <laughs> well i'm liking how you sort of piece this together yeah. and then looking at other riders as well really smart um, because it, like you say, if you just look at the person at the top and just go, oh, he's doing that. So to do that or to beat that, I need this as well. But that's not, that's not the best way of looking at it. You need to kind of look from a different direction, like an outside of the box. Yeah. Um, and it's very interesting. You mentioned Charlie because he's always been one for this where he'll find like a, it's like finding a line or something, but no one else can see. Yeah. Um, and that, that sometimes is a better way of solving the problem rather than okay. using the same tool as them. You know, you might say, well, he uses this tool, but I'm going to use these little tools. And, and hearing you talk about that, um, it, that sounds really inspiring. I can see, you know, the way you're talking about this, like, you know, the brain, like working for this. It's honestly really interesting uh, to see. Uh, I, I know I'm not the most talented rider. I've never been. And um, unfortunately, I will never be. But uh, I think I have other quality and I, I always try to look at the other rider to get inspired because I'm not, I'm not talented, I'm not a creator, but I think I'm maybe smart enough to, to see the good thing from here, from there and to try to mix the thing together and to, to put it in my way. Yeah. So when you look at the rider, so I, I'm confident. I'm confident for the future. Even if I'm quite old, I think I, I still have my thing to do. No, that's good. That's good, man. That's good to when hear. I started, yeah. When I started, Giacomo was from another planet. There was no way to beat him on his, on his field. But then uh, we, we found the way. And then it was Kenny. Kenny was so amazing because you look at him and it was like, okay, this guy is not that good, but he was always winning always winning and okay we found the way 
And then Gilles, and it took me so long. And I thought, okay, there is no way to beat this guy. It was the first time in my career I thought, okay, this guy is from another planet. But finally, on the last year, I think I can beat him more, more time than he, he can beat me. So, hey, honestly, it's hard to believe. But I think, I, I know I, I won't be as good as Jack. I know if the World Championship was on 10 rounds, he would be World Champion every year. But I think I... I have a little chance, so I want to, to find the way to, yeah. to, to, to play it fully. And for this, I have to be better. And to be better, I know I have to be smarter. So I have to, to take a look at the, the other rider and get, get a, yeah, find some, some trick to be better. And honestly, I have this feeling. Uh, I'm, I'm pissed off that you said the, the word because it's exactly what I thought, but I didn't want to admit it. Last year, I, feel, I, I felt like a peak and I was like, okay, this is very good, but what else? And now I'm feeling again like I'm totally off the game compared to uh, the new way to ride. So this is the, the, the best part for me because I'm like, okay, what I do is old school. I have to rechange everything. And it's going to be next. I'm already thinking about the, the next season because it's going to be awesome. I have some good tools for the coming world championship so i hope i'm going to do something good but i have also i'm full of uh fighties for the future well what about the bikes then you mentioned obviously how the sport has changed and the bikes have changed drastically um really th throughout the sport um give us your insight to that because you would have started on you know low bottom brackets shorter now it, it's completely different what, what are your thoughts on that um honestly this is frustrating me because now, when I take a look at my bike, I'm like, okay, this bike is perfect. I don't want to change nothing. And I know it's a terrible way to see my bike because mm. uh, I should have more ideas. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th this, was, this was something because I started with, the, with bikes that were so bad. Uh, and then we, we had some... The first, before Cox, in my opinion, the bike were just bad. It was badly done. And then... With Cox, we had something better, but something better that we make evolve. It was much more interesting. Mm -hmm. It wasn't correcting a too heavy bike. Uh, no, it was like, okay, what we have is good, but let's find a way to make it better and better and better. And it was awesome. And I think Cox stopped for 20 reasons, but one of them is like the, maybe the, the inspiration wasn't, wasn't here anymore. Uh, the, last, the last Cox, in my opinion, were the best. In, in one specific uh, way. We, we had those aluminum bikes, uh, quite flexible, very light, and uh, yeah, flexible, but dynamic. And yeah. they were very good, very light. Honestly, my bike 10 years ago, uh, it was lighter than it is now, but uh, now my bike is better. And I think Krugers has made a great, great job with those with those stiff bike at the beginning. Especially for the, aluminum, you know, they want you yeah. know, for a, an aluminium stiff frame, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very very well. Well. Right, to, to, to say this. And uh, I, I think when the cookers, the first, uh, the first cookers uh, were on the market, they were, I think, not good for the time. It was too soon. But, but uh, now I'm maybe 10 kilo heavier than I was 10 years ago. The riders are heavier, much more are stronger and uh, there is so many hooks so we need this kind of bike and uh, mm. now now the, the bike are totally different and they are very good and i'm a bit frustrated about the carbon because uh well, that's well, gonna be my next year question have you have you had a carbon bike yet or? yes I, I rode the the k1 oh yes clean. yep it clean. was it was a perfect bike but in my opinion much more uh, closer than a, a Cox in, in the way to ride it, than a it, it was It was kind of flexible. This bike was very dynamic. It was almost as flexible as a Cox, but much more uh, responding. So I love that bike. But I'm not sure I would love it back. So I would like to try. But the main thing is the, well, it depends on the rider. But if you take a look at my training bike, it's uh, it's destroyed. It's totally smashed. 
I don't know how a rider can keep their bike clean. Mine is... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I ride the bike for one week and it looks like one year old. So the, for me, the carbon is not working because it's too, it's too fragile. Right. And I, I have those issues. I, 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 lately, with the, with the K1, I had to change my, my way to ride to preserve the bike. And it, it wasn't a good, a good thing. So I was so happy with the bike, but also very frustrated because it was fragile. Mm. So I, I spoke with Abel and he said that they have option to make it stronger, but probably working the same. So it could be, it could be a thing. But in my opinion, uh, today the, the Krukers is the, the best bike because it's so strong. Uh, it's very rigid, but it's it's also kind of dynamic. But and of you course, have they're to... French too. So, <laughs> well, honestly, I've, uh, I, I I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a I'm not so French. You know, in my I have uh, tomorrow uh, if I have the the choice between uh, a French guy winning or uh, an English guy winning, if it, for me the nationality doesn't count. If, if I prefer that guy or that guy, I, I'm not at all. Uh, well, I don't know if it's good to say this, but I don't feel patriot at all. Yeah. Honestly, I, yeah. I, I I love my country for many things, and I think it's dumb for many things. And I prefer other things. Uh, I prefer the weather in Spain and where I live, but I prefer my my food than yours. But I prefer <laughs> your culture. I prefer your culture regarding the, the tribal community. So you know, there is so much to pick everywhere. So no, honestly. Uh, Honestly, Krukers is French, yes, but they are, before everything, making great bikes. And, uh, and for example, uh, Clean is, uh, is, is Spanish, and they are making the, the best carbon bike. Also, there is no yeah, debate. There is, there's no one that, they can com- yeah, that can compete with Clean bikes right now, I suppose, in, in that sense. But it's, all- it's interesting to see it come round, though, like you say, with the Krukers that are a little bit heavier and stiffer, um, because at one point it was about going really, really lightweight. I mean, yeah. I seem to remember that you was very at the forefront of making stuff lightweight, right? You used <laughs> to put holes in a lot of things, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, I, I have stopped, uh, but... I was uh, replacing the rim tape that we have that works perfectly by, uh, you know, very light tape. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying tape, them for yeah. like two weeks and then I have to change them. And it was like, I don't know, maybe 20 grams less and everything was like that. And I put some titanium bolts, but they could break. So it was like, okay, I had to count the hours and everything. And now <laughs> it's absolutely over. My bike is full of uh, steel bolt because they... Because they are better, I won't crack them. It's good. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have changed a lot my mentality about that because I, I'm feeling that it's not, uh, it's not, it's not the main thing. You have to, yeah. The, the bike has to respond good before being light. So it's a really interesting point. I think, yeah. Well, years and years ago, we always worked as the word weight weenies. We just wanted our bikes to be as light as humanly possible. And I think we hit a point where they realized. That wasn't the goal. Yeah. The lighter it got, you just it just went backwards. So we had to get stronger, like you say. And and in the same time, we had so much time to make the section that you could take all the time in the world and do the move as clean as possible. But now we have to be so fast that sometimes the plan doesn't go perfect. Mm. You have to adapt and the bike has to accept it. So... Yeah, it's gonna evolve. Uh, honestly, I, I'm a bit disappointed because I don't have so much ideas to make the, the bike better. And of course, I don't have the opportunity to collaborate like I did when it was uh, my dad's company. Yes. So yeah, it was so cool because we had some ideas. Uh, some were very good, others so bad, but we, I, I could try everything. It was I was speaking about that with uh, Perrin yesterday and uh, I was thinking, yeah, you're right. Any idea I had, I could have it. It was so cool. And it was cool because we didn't realize it was cool. It was just natural. So I could I could test anything. But honestly, uh, my bike is good now. Yeah, so. I think from what you've said, though, like if, you, if your bike is quite good and you yourself have said that you as a rider have so much to work on. So I think if by adding other things like, oh, I could work on my bike as well, that just seems like a lot of things to manage. So if the bike is good, it sounds like you know, you've got that roughly, that's okay. 
you know, your head and, you know, your performance yeah. mentality seems like the better thing to be working, to on. working on. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think it's good to, to have some change to it's it's always the same thing. I think you have to to adapt and to find solution. And when you change things on the bike, even if it's not better, it's just different. And different sometimes is good because it's different. Uh, if you take a look at Jack, he's always switching the stem, the bar, everything a little bit changing. And I think he's right to do it. But uh, me, uh, I'm just. I'm just too. I'm stupid. When I when I'm fixing my bike, it has two bikes has to be the same. And if I change a part, I check it for so long, and I feel okay, it was good, but and I eat my own brain. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I cannot do what uh, Jack is doing with the stem changing a lot or the tires or whatever. But I think he's right to do it. Um, so you spoke a little bit about it as well, like, you know, obviously your dad and um, the involvement with, with Cox uh, and Trial, you know, these were staple brands in the trial scene. Yeah, yeah. Every one of us would have had something from Cox or, or Trial. Um, how did that How did that begin? Um, was that once you were starting to ride and you then thought, well, you know, let's get into this? It's. I'm sure many of our listeners would love to know a little bit about that evolution because yeah. that was massive for, for Trials and ultimately has shaped... Well, for that, that generation, they were leading... Trials yeah. world, weren't yeah. they? They were the top. They were like the crookers of that uh, generation, if if you know what I mean. But we were just like, how did it? How did it start? Uh, we we weren't happy with the with the bike we had. Like uh, there were, we had some ID with my father, and mainly he had some IDs, but he has no skill at all. So it's like, okay, I'm pretty sure this bike is bad, but I don't know how we could make it better. So we have tried to be surrounded by people who had good ideas, and we we start with a, a French a French worker who were uh, making cycling road uh, in his garage, and we try something a longer bike with a shorter rear base, and we just started like this. And uh, I really liked the bike, and the plan wasn't to sell it; it was just. It was just my bike. Just make it but, for yourself, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, we have had the opportunity to give one to Bruno Arnold, who's a farmer world champion from the UCI. He was like, okay, I would like this bike. He was at this time riding for Specialized. And he said, okay, I would like this bike and I'm going to put uh, Specialized on it. But just, I want you to to build me the same Then you have for, for your son, he said to my dad. And the plan was to make him, him this bike and he put Specialized on it but then he stopped his contract with specialized and he said okay i still want your bike what can we do and we started this way okay we'll try to sell this bike and then after a few months we we realized that it was too complicated to produce in france so we started uh, in taiwan to have bigger series and the idea was okay what can we produce uh, how is the current bike what could be done better and it was the idea and this ID never never left the brand. So at the end, this is so cool, but so dumb. We had like five or six engineers mm. and two guys to sell the bike, two yeah, two salesmen. Yep. So no, yeah. no company can, can work like this. <laughs> like five guys yeah. uh, building the thing and yeah. two guys to sell. It, it, it was be the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So it was it was an adventure, honestly, and uh, it, w- it was it was awesome because uh, every yeah every week we had an ID, and then uh, a few weeks later a prototype, and it, it was good. good. Uh, a few months later a production, it was always like that. I I almost never ride with the Siri bike because I was always trying something else, something else, something else. <laughs> so it was coming in the future, and uh, it was like this. It was it was really cool. It was it was a period. It, it sounds like a golden age for, of course, for me, but maybe also for trial. But I, I think there was, yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with like that. The whole yeah. thing, people still talk about Cox Days 2008, right? Yeah. Like, that's the thing. So how many years ago now? Like, it, they clearly set the bar and set this kind of uh, expectation from another brand to be like, oh, hey, you can still make you know, bikes and just bring something to the sport. That's why I'm saying Cox came from nothing, like like you were saying, and to then being the forefront of the sport, making yeah. these bikes, creating these events. 
Um, you know, and there wasn't anyone like that then. So I just felt, felt like, yeah, you, you they def, you kind of, you definitely were pushing the sport in in a better direction is what I'm trying to, to get out here. And I think that was a really golden, golden age. You know, we were, I just started uh, riding. I always try to, well, I don't talk a lot about it because, uh, Honestly, I feel nostalgic, and uh, it's the worst feeling you can it's have. It's difficult. Yes, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I try to be uh, focused on the future, on how I can improve my riding, how mm. I can help the rider to be better in the future, yeah. how to develop our sport. So if I start to think about Cox before he was better, blah, 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 it's yeah. no. So, so yes, okay. It's let's, nice let's, that those days are done. Though, what is, is <laughs> all right, well, this is, it leads us on to the perfect next sort of segue here anyway. What? What is the future of trials itself? What do you think the direction trials should be taking? What direction are you taking? Uh, what I love in trials is that we don't have one uh, one same spirit because many riders, some come from the uh, urban scene like BMX. Uh, I come from motor trials. Some come from mountain bike and all these different origin. Uh, it's it's very rich, but it's also not working so much because we don't have enough identity. Uh, and uh, what is a trial rider? It's a uh, it's a guy with the with the fluo with the fluo jersey, uh, very competitive, uh, like a motor trial. Or it's a guy uh, wearing jeans and a street bike. Mm. And uh, who's the best trial riders? Is it uh, Jack Carty? From, from the UK? Is it Danny McCaskill? Mm, is yeah. it Montalvo? It, it's, it's hard. So it's rich, but it's, but it's also a weakness. So I don't know what has to be the next direction. In my opinion, the main, main thing to, the main idea is to, we, we, we need more riders. And uh, yeah. if we have more riders, then, then we'll, we have to start from, from this point. Uh, I think, I think we need we need two big things. It's more clubs. Uh, if you have a club, you can have uh, a coach, and the level will get better. And this is very important. And we also need a community, uh, like the in England. You, you do a lot of uh, street session all together. And this is, in my opinion, the second thing. So I think you guys. Uh, have everything regarding the community aspect. In Spain, they have everything regarding the club and competition aspect. Yeah. Uh, uh, a brand like <laughs> has everything regarding the development. A brand like Krukas has everything regarding the the innovation and the, the, the coolest bike, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Jitsi, they are doing everything very professional. So they are important. So we need to do something with all this. And maybe Cots were that good because everything was put into one company, one hand. Mm. Yeah. That's and, it, mm. and it couldn't work. It's, 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 it's very bad when one, one thing or everything. But it was, it was good to, to build a thing. But now it's very, it's very yeah, it's, it's a little bit everywhere. And we have to do something more consistent with this. That's so, a really yeah interesting. What I've never yeah, looked at it that way because you good. you really hit the nail on the head there because like lots of these different brands or different riders, you know, you have some street aspects, you have some competition, um, and as you were saying that, like you know, the fact that we don't really have an ide identity. Yeah. Um, the thing that was the, the image that was coming to my head was kind of like the Jitsi, like you know, with all the uniforms and kind of things is. We take we take the mick out of it. Of sometimes. course, we call it Power Ranger outfits. You but, know, but at the same time, but at the them, same time, that does create an identity of yeah. like, well, this is what a trials rider. It is a form of identity, so that it kind of is good in a way. Um, but I think, that, like I said, the number one is more riders because more riders will kind of naturally shape that. I suppose exactly. More people will go towards one direction, and that then gives the basis. Well, now we know. Let's have some more, I, I, more street rides and get more people out. <laughs> I feel like Charles has missed so much big turn. Like uh, at the beginning of the mountain bike, like uh, Bruno Amor, the rider I told you, he has a contract with Specialized. You realize? Mm. Or oh, Martin Ashton, he had that contract with Cannondale, no? Yeah. And yeah. Hey, we had this and we have lost this. And then we had a uh, super company, small company, but super company with Cox. 
And then we have lost it. And then we had uh, Danny McCaskill, uh, who may explode the trial, but no connection at all with the competition trial. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. it's good or bad. No, but, but, yeah, but I understand what you mean. Connection. And I think we, and now I, I think we are missing the Olympics. So we, we have missed so much turn. One day, I'm optimistic. One exactly. day, maybe, no. you know, this is why. I'm, I'm an optimist too. Uh, if we have missed so much turn, yeah. it means that we have had so much opportunities. If we had so much opportunities, that we have something, no? It's that trial All is not. Is, I keep saying, like, it's always the people that are in that position, right? So someone's in charge of the British cycling, so to speak, whatever. Yeah. All we need is some youngster who knows about trials, suddenly takes that position and says, yeah, I'm going to fund trials. Uh, it's not necessarily but. that, though, because it's like what Kenny, when we had Kenny on, he was kind of saying, look, you've got to, if you want this action, you've got to, you know, make that change. Yeah. And like Vince just said, with with Cox, you know, that was, you know, one brand that was going for it. But yeah. a lot of missed opportunities, like, you know, Hans Ray uh, said in another podcast that trials was very much nearly in the X Games. Yeah. And yeah, another true. big opportunity there. Yeah, and how we, I think, and... Adding to that, when you're saying about Cannondale with uh, Martin Ashton and all these sports, now, obviously, Danny Mac and sort of Fabio, sponsored by Canyon, they're not even trials. Yeah, they're not trials brands. They just made a one-off bike for well, Danny them. Danny Santa Cruz, isn't it? Yeah, so. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Santa Cruz and yeah. oh, Fabio's Canyon, sorry. They don't even make those bikes. <laughs> so now, you know, Martin Ashton was like, yeah, cool, I make my own frame, I sell them all. And Danny's kind of like, cool, they've given me my own frame. Sorry, no one can have it. Yeah, like that seems to have gone backwards. I must say, until until you've kind of said that, it's kind of rung true a bit. Where, yeah, I'm not sure how how you can move forward with that and and share and share those. I think the the worst idea could be to force one direction. Yeah. Like okay, and now in competition, we will stop your boring spot and put some kickers everywhere. It would be stupid, or to say okay. Uh, a guy like Macaskill can say whatever he wants, but he's not a trial rider. And to see it badly from the from the, the competition spot. No, no. We don't have to force it. I think we have to push uh, the way we we feel it. Me, uh, for example, my way to push is say, okay, I accept to be uh, many, many days on the field for my training or for the kids' training. And sometimes it feels in the winter when it's raining and what <laughs> you're feeling, okay, I have six riders in front of me and I am going to spend the afternoon here. Can I, why, why can I make something bigger? But no, this is my part because I love it. I feel it. So this is my part. And uh, Danny McCaskill is doing his part. Mm, and yeah. Kenny, when he was in show in Doha or whatever, he's doing his part too. Mm. So we just have to push and uh, it's going to be something because the, 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 the patient we have and uh, it, yeah, it's, it's so cool. Okay, honestly, it's it's not the most exciting years for for the conditional riders, for example, because the the events are kind of poorer every time. Mm. Honestly, we have to be honest with this. The the last French Championship was 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 sad compared to ten years before or even to five years before. But okay, it was the, the first time of the organization, and they want to be better and they want to make other competition that's good we have someone new in the in the loop so it's gonna work so i think we we just all all of us have to push and it's gonna be something you guys maybe maybe you will be the trials world syndicate in the future with the machine league. why not why not yeah, i yeah. mean i love that yeah, yeah. everyone needs to, i do agree with that everyone no. does need to push in their own way because it's like you don't know what then comes from that yeah it was like by onza you know, in the UK, big one for us was, of course, Onza. They yeah. brought in lots of in entry level bikes. Matt and I both start on Onza, and of course, we then that's how new board. riders got into the sport, really. And I think that's why now we're seeing less of that, yeah. potentially. Yeah. yeah. So if if everyone but, does their own kind of push, and like you say, in you just you don't know what the result of that might be, or you know, five years down the line, or how many changes it then takes but it might grow into something that then becomes big so yeah. um i very much agree everyone do their bit everyone do something everyone do their tiny bit for trial scene you know everyone helping out and pushing uh, it if you take a look at the 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 competition in catalonia i don't know maybe six seven years ago where they were probably doing something but i 
I didn't pay any attention and no one except the guy from there. And now every rider in the world want to ride the competition in Barcelona. Okay, guys, uh, the uh, trial sport there, you're doing your job. Keep up and uh, clean. It's a new thing. It's a new company yeah. that works well. Jitsi, so professional, quite new. Keep up. Yeah. So uh, I don't think there is one direction. It, it's good. And even guys like uh, Daniel Cascula, Fabio, it's new too. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going to be the future. Honestly, if you ask me, what can we do to make trials some bigger or better? I have no ID, global ID, but I have 1000 ID regarding. Any, every little details in competition, for example, and you guys uh, yeah. have other ideas. So I'm optimistic. Yeah, I like that. That is kind of a well, nice. Well, we, we won't keep you too much longer, uh, Vince. I know you're a busy man and taking some, some time out. We'll get some. We've got to get to the quick fire round. We'll, every, we'll make it quick. Fire every too. Shindig podcast, we do what's called the f- quick fire round. And this is kind of like our three main questions that we ask every trials rider kind of pertain into their favorite yeah. spots and things like that so yeah let's just start with the first one where is vincent your favorite spot in the world to ride we could put you anywhere mm. honestly uh, i would be it have to be a real nuts no well it, it could be like um what you would want to see from a yeah. spot um or it could be a physical location yeah Okay, the dream spot for me is the, you know, in the video of Danny McAskill with uh, every little toys. Where imagine it, yeah. Human size oh, and, yeah. <laughs> See, this is a different answer. I love this, Vince. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good this, one. This is the spot because uh, <laughs> sometimes, honestly, at home, I keep on making section with my fork and my knife and my plate. And I imagine gapping from uh, my glass <laughs> to... Hey, don't you do this? Oh, <laughs> no, this? I understand. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you do. It's so good. So this yeah. is the dream spot. And uh, <laughs> he had it. And if we have to talk about the uh, real spots, uh, the spot where we have to go on the bike park, but they are not boring, but they are a bit ugly. So it's, it's not nice. It's not nice, nice places. It's, it's paradise. It's technical paradise, but it's not nice places. So... I think, I think my dream spot would be a really nice uh, bike park. But mm. honestly, I, I'm not sure it exists. So yeah, it's a Spanish bike park, like a good-looking bike park. But it's a good-looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, no, why, why, why not? I mean, yeah, you haven't. Ra- Radical bikes has been rebuilt. I know you've been there once before uh, back yeah. in the day. Good that's times, yeah. that's definitely looking a lot more professional now as well. So uh, good, good, yeah, good, good shout. Um, so we know you are. You're in a, a bike park, or you're in your new uh, Imagine it Park, which would be really cool. Who who are you riding with, or what group of riders are you riding with that you're having a great time? You're keeping motivated. Uh, so many, so many. But you can many list are, some that are gonna, you know, get you well, get you going. For many years, uh, I rode with Nico, Nico Valle. Yeah. Uh, we spent so much time together. We we started together. He was like, I don't know, maybe 12, 13. But now he moved uh, in the south of France for his studies. So this was my crew with him and Morgan Vassan, yeah. who's, a, who's a guy from here. And now my crew are my my riders, the, the rider I coach. They are my crew too. So we ride a lot uh, in the in Fontainebleau, like uh, places like Butier and also in the yeah. bike park of Cerny, which, is, uh, which is very cool. But now my, my crew first is uh, is Perrin de Vaiv. So we are living together, riding together. Oh, so yes, of course. So you, for people crew. who don't yeah. know, yeah, Vince is a, a lucky man who's, uh, whose partner is also a trolls rider, Perrin, if you people who haven't seen her. Uh, yeah. So that's, yeah, that, that's that's almost every trolls rider's dream, isn't it? <laughs> and that's like Should we just go on the bikes, dear. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what I mean. You know, just get back home and instead of going out for dinner, do you do you guys do that? Do you ride together then? It's like, oh, let's not go for dinner. Let's go cycle. Uh, we ride together uh, almost every day. She's a, a physio Epic. too, so she she works more than me. <laughs> <Right by. laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we like in Spain. We, it was, uh, I'm, I'm back from Spain in holidays, but it was holidays with her family. So imagine you go with your girlfriend and her family. It's not holidays, I mean, you just work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. no, it was, it was so cool because it was about riding and no, it's, it's, it's something crazy. I still don't realize it's like, 
you're already leading this. Okay, going to ride with your girlfriend and yeah. in competition and so that's really your life. So yeah. It's, oh man, well it's nice to hear that. I know you said last year was quite a difficult time, but it sounds like a year on now you're in a really good place, man. That does sound good really position. good because I know some people like they go ride, and they're like, Oh, I've got to get home like to go see the missus. Like <laughs> she's gonna be really annoyed if <laughs> yeah. I'm still riding. Like <laughs> parents, so parents probably like Han, uh, what are you doing here? Get back out. It's too early. Go back out. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, yeah, she's she's uh, she's doing my physical preparation. So she's the she's the boss of the physical preparation. I'm the boss of the trials preparation, and we do everything together. So it's a dream. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a dream, dream man. That's really. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm really excited to see you know how yeah. you're going to do in the next next month in these competitions. That's that's awesome. Um, so yeah, we've got that. Sorry, you know where you know where you're riding. You know who you're riding with. What is um, your move, Vince? What do you love? The one move you yeah. love doing. What's your favorite trick? Uh, well, front wheel move mainly. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's you're good it's, at those. That's what Vince. Yeah, you've always been. Yeah, yeah, I really love it, and uh, I also really love it because I was so bad at it. And uh, I can remember at the beginning, uh, I think Jill was the f the first rider to make it so perfectly, and I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. And I trained so hard to be able to go to do good thing on the front wheel. Well, now my, my thing on the front wheel are not that bad. So yes. I love it, <laughs> and uh, I also love uh, double hooks. It's it's really it's really one of the moves I, I love, and uh, and then there is a lot of regular move. But I hate uh, the, the 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 gap to back wheel, back wheel, back wheel, or the bend up to back wheel. I'm not that good, and uh, the kickers. I'm bad at kickers, but but I love kickers. I'm bad because I'm scared, and so there is something to do oh, with it. Yeah, I see so, that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, when you do I, get it, the satisfaction is higher. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So. Well, pretty much everything, but if I have one thing, it's maybe the front wheel move. Yeah. Have you got one of the Tarty Days t shirts? I was thinking that. Because I do have everyone somewhere. had the Tarty Days t shirt, and there's there's the picture of yourself, Vince, on there doing a massive like up to front, and your head is like <laughs> so far over the handle. Like your helmet is touching your front wheel, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Have you ever done that? How did you hit the front wheel, like going so far? Uh, no, no, no. But yeah, when I've seen this image, I was like, wow, that's crazy. I'm so close. But no, I think uh, I should uh, I should have some more space to go more forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I know. Awesome. It's such an awesome photo. So we got, well, that'll probably be on this I think podcast. that's why I always remember. Yeah. yeah, I think that's why I always remember um, Yeah, Vince being good at those front wheel moves because he would just have that extreme body positioning in that in that photo. Um, and uh, um, I'd just like to finish just saying I hope that hopefully you'll be back over in the UK maybe sometime, Vince. I know you've been here before riding, so perhaps um, when you know when there's a more of an event going on, maybe we'll organise an event and get all of the top riders yeah. there, something like that. Uh, with uh, with Perrin, we we take a good look at what you're doing, guys, with the with the group riding and we really would like to do to to join you so i think you yes, yes. <laughs> Mate, we would love to have you there seriously there's some other some other french riders are saying oh they're going to come over and and join but us maybe maybe you could try to make one more uh you do it a lot it's good but let's say that one will be a little bit special i don't know why maybe the venue maybe but okay you should you should put a date on the agenda and say and the calendar and say okay in uh I don't know, the Christmas ride, the whatever ride is going to be big. And uh, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe help, uh, help just by grouping the effort for the rider coming from uh, everywhere in the world. It would be awesome. And uh, if you do it, guys, Perrin and I will be for sure. And we'll try to motivate more riders to come. Oh, it that's, be, oh, that's it amazing. It would be something amazing. Yeah, thank you we'll so have to get much. Mr. Jack Meek on the case because he was the man who done the, the last big ride, which, uh, yeah, you was there as well in London. Yeah, 2010, yeah. March 2010. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, face we'll, we'll, we'll definitely put some pen to paper there. I know that there will be something just like that, especially you egging us on just giving me more motivation, Vince, to, to get it done. So for sure, man. This has been an awesome conversation. Man. Yeah. And this is, um, I think there's going to be a lot of nuggets in here for the, for the listeners. Thank you, thank you so much yeah, again, man, Vincent. It's been yeah. absolute pleasure. Um, if you haven't, guys, go and follow uh, Vincent Hermance on on Instagram. You can it's literally Vin, it's just Vince Hermance, isn't it? At Vince yeah. Hermance, yeah. You can uh, find I him. Do check out um, in the next month because what we've got the uh, the Spain UCI and then in France in September. Is that correct? Yeah. So yeah, yes. that'll be. 
broadcast. Usually the UCI does a live broadcast. Are you going to be that. there, Vince? Will you be there in the competition in Spain? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Course. So hopefully we'll. Ho- oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm aiming to be there. We're aiming to be there. Maybe we'll we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. We won't say too much, but we'd like someone to see this logo and say, "Oh, they're part of the trial scene." <laughs> 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 so it's going to have to be getting there to a world and uh, and see, and then uh, who knows? Maybe. Maybe we'll commentate a UCI one day. Maybe. Ah. Maybe. <laughs> hey, so it's not syndicate. It's not trial syndicate anymore. It's a uh, trial. Uh, it's trial president. You want to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I like. I like that actually. Maybe we could be the, you know, the voices of uh, of trials. The, the trials president. We'll see. We'll see. It's still early days for us, and we'll we'll keep going and. Uh, and getting amazing guests just like yourself on the show has been an absolute pleasure. Um, uh, as always, I've, I've learned a lot and I'm, I'm hoping you listeners uh, have as well. Thanks again, Vince. Um, and, and enjoy the rest of your day, man. We'll, we'll speak lot. to you soon. Take care. Thanks, Vince. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.